Hi everyone, it's Julian from Digital Trends, and I'm here with the Essential Phone. It's the first phone by the creator of Android, Andrew Rubin. His company is called Essential, and this is technically called the PH1, which when you spell out the one, it says phone, so that's the Essential Phone. Now immediately off the bat, you can see the design is very unique. It's got this little notch over here at the top where the camera sits, and the bezel is extended all the way to the top, and there's a little slight chin over here at the bottom. But it's very similar to the bezel-less trend of other smartphones such as LG G6 and the Samsung Galaxy S8 and now the Note 8 that we saw this week. Let's take a look at the back and you'll see there's actually no branding of the Essential logo anywhere on this phone. Uh, it's because they wanted to keep it as minimal and uh, as much of a phone for you rather than anyone else or for the company to promote. So uh, again, this is a very minimal looking phone. As you can see here, we got the fingerprint sensor, a little dual camera setup right there, and over here are these two little pins that uh, I'll talk about in a little bit. But uh, let's take some quick specs rundown. We got the Qualcomm Snapdragon 835, which is the same processor you'll find on other phones like the Galaxy S8, a 13 megapixel dual cameras, uh, four gigs of RAM, you get 128 gigs of internal storage. Uh, that's the only option because there's also no micro SD card slot. And a 3040 milliamp powered battery, which is fairly standard among smartphones these days. Uh, but this, this, talk about this screen for a second. It's a uh, quad HD display, but the screen is actually 5.7 inches. Now it's only a hair taller and wider than the regular iPhone 7, and that screen is 4.7 inches. So you're getting a whole extra inch uh, of display with just a marginally bigger phone from the regular iPhone 7. And that means, again, huge display, pretty compact phone. Uh, I do have large hands to be fair, but it sits pretty comfortably and feels like a normal sized phone to me. One of the more interesting things is the choice of materials. It's actually titanium body. So over here on the sides, you can see it's a titanium. That should mean it should survive those drops pretty well. And on the back is a beautiful ceramic. It feels nice to the touch and feels soft almost, kind of like glass. But it actually lets the antenna signals through much better, uh, which is why they don't have those ugly antenna bands on the back. So let's talk about the software. It's almost the same exact experience you'll find in the Google Pixel. Uh, it's pure Android, no bloatware or uh, no uh, fluff or extra apps. It's all the same exact apps you'll find on the Google Pixel or pure Android. It is running Android 7.1.1 as you can see here, but it will be getting Oreo soon. As you can see here, this little notch, uh, when we first saw this design with the notch here and the camera here, we thought it might interfere with the software, but it's, it's actually designed around it so that it never blocks anything important. And later on, if I get a notification, you might see that the camera, uh, actually the notifications extend out a little longer than usual. And that's how uh, they get around the fact of potentially having things block, blocked by that camera cut out there. As you can see though, you know, you have straight access to the Google feed, normal app launcher, like on the Pixel, pretty standard settings, and of course, Google Assistant. We've got the power button here on the bottom, the volume rocker next to it, and over here, USB Type-C charging port. SIM card tray is actually over here, which is interesting, and sadly, it's just one bottom firing speaker. But before we go any further, I do want to take a second to talk about these pins that I mentioned earlier. So this is actually kind of similar to the Motorola Moto Z, uh, Moto Z mod, where basically Motorola has 16 pogo pins over here, and you slap on Moto mods that enhance your phone. Uh, for example, a 360 degree camera mod, or a uh, battery mod that extends the battery, battery of your phone. This implementation is allows the mod to be much smaller and you can just slap it right here and all it does is the phone charges the mod and the data is transferred wirelessly. So one of the first mods that's available is actually a 360 degree camera as well. 
and you basically slap it on and it's like a little periscope like thing basically it lets you take 360 degree photos and it does all the processing so your smartphone doesn't have to do much except power it and that the photos and everything is transferred wirelessly to the phone so it's an interesting implementation because it means uh, the company does not have to change or, or they don't uh, it's not an issue if they change the design next year or the build of the phone because they only have to make sure that these two pogo pins uh, lie in a specific alignment and space that doesn't interfere with the phone's design. There's not a lot of special features on this phone. It's very bare bones, pure Android, not a lot of gimmicky features. Uh, some of the only things that you would really see uh, are the camera. Let's launch it right here. Again, as I mentioned, it's a dual camera sensor, 13 megapixels each. Sadly, no OIS, optical image stabilization, but it's a pretty good camera. The results are pretty solid. Uh, the only problem that we've been having is that there's a lot of lag and shutter lag that makes sometimes the photos super blurry if you're not keeping your hand super still. But let's go through some of the functions here. So, take a photo. And there's some photos that I just took on the regular camera. Now there is this HDR function over here, so you can turn that on. And of course there's, so the interesting thing is that the dual camera, one shoots you know, color and the other shoots in mono. And you can actually just go straight to mono. It's very similar to the Huawei Leica camera. It's, uh, sadly there's no exposure uh, slider, which is kind of a strange thing to leave out, so you can't control that exposure slider uh, right before you take the shot, so things uh, might look either too dull or too bright. It feels very bare bones, the, the camera, because they seem to be missing some features. For example, HDR was a recent addition, and portrait mode is something that's going to be coming soon. Uh, I'm not sure when, but they did mention it's coming, so uh, camera still feels like a work in progress. Battery life has been decent. Uh, I think today I've been using it, the phone a lot and surprisingly uh, it's at 28% right now. Uh, it was a lot worse the other two days but that's because I had an app that was draining the battery a lot. Uh, I uninstalled it and now it's been significantly better. Uh, I actually probably used this phone way too much. I did a lot of bench benchmark, benchmark tests and uh, took a lot of photos today and video. So uh, today might be a, a heavy use case type of situation and 28% is not bad for a smartphone these days, although it could be better, uh, not the best, but definitely for medium uh, usage or even sometimes high usage, you can definitely expect uh, at least a full day's worth of battery, but definitely nothing more. So all in all, the Essential Phone has flagship specs, uh, work in progress camera, but everything else seems to be pretty on par with a lot of uh, smartphones these days, flagship smartphones. Uh, some of the only things that uh, we don't like about it that's missing in this price range is it has no waterproofing. Uh, most phones in its price range do. Uh, there's no headphone jack, of course, which is always a sad thing to see. And uh, there's no micro SD card slot, which isn't terrible. Uh, but there are phones out there like the Note 8, the Galaxy S8, and the LG G6. They all come with micro SD card slots, so uh, you can only buy one storage option here. So it's kind of a bummer, but at the same time you are getting 128 gigs. So uh, that really depends if you need that much storage, or if you don't, then you might want to look at some smaller, uh, or smaller storage phones. This phone offers a uh, decent bang for your buck. Uh, I think it offers strong performance, a solid battery life, a great software experience, and best of all, you should be getting software and security updates pretty regularly. That's pretty important. Uh, now those downsides that I mentioned, no waterproofing, that's totally up to you if you like that stuff or not, or if you think your phone should have it, especially at this price. Uh, if you should know, Sprint is the only carrier that's selling it, but you can buy the phone from essential.com and it's uh, unlocked and works on every carrier. So uh, yeah, for recap, that's the Essential phone, uh, also known as the Essential PH1. It's the first phone by Andy Rubin, and it's a phone that's currently running Android 7.1.1, and will soon get Android Oreo.